Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be looking at more prayers of the faith, and this time we'll look at the Litany of Humility. The Litany of Humility is one of the more recent prayers, widely believed to have been written by a man named Raphael Cardinal Mary del Val less than a century and a half ago. In reality, there's very little evidence of whether he wrote it or not, or who the real writer was. It's a private devotion that people can say anytime they want to. And today, I want to look at what it says, but first, since we're discussing humility again, there's one thing to keep in mind. Way back in episode 72, check the link in the video description, I examined the concepts of pride and humility, discovering that true humility is about correctly understanding how you compare to others and to God, so that you don't get caught up in yourself and your own abilities and forget what really matters. Now, the litany. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. We begin by addressing Jesus directly, recognizing the meekness that he showed by becoming human and giving himself for our sins. Now, at first, this might not seem like an act of humility because God is so much greater than human beings and doesn't owe them anything. So taken that way, it would seem not to represent a proper valuing of himself. However, this act of sacrifice on the part of Jesus was done not because we deserved it in any way, but in order to obey the will of the Father. Recognizing the greatness and perfection of God, Jesus knew the divine will was to be obeyed, and the divine will was for mankind to be redeemed by his sacrifice. So this is an act of humility and obedience, as it says in Philippians. He humbled himself, becoming obedient unto death, even to the death of the cross. Philippians 2, 8 From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, O Jesus. This refers to the desire people have to be congratulated by their fellow human beings. Often, the congratulations of human beings need to be bought at the expense of your relationship with God, and we'll be better off if we don't want that to happen. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, O Jesus. Obviously, this doesn't refer to the love of God, which according to Romans 8, 38-39, we can never be separated from. This must refer to the love of our fellow man. This part says that even our relationships with other people shouldn't be a big enough factor to distract us from what we really need. Our objective should be to obtain what God offers. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, O Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, O Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, O Jesus. These three lines of the prayer all refer to the approval of our fellow man, and all carry similar meaning to the line about being esteemed. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, O Jesus. The nature of our relationship with God is an objective one. We're either in a good relationship with God, or we're not and being in that good relationship should be the most important thing to us, since it's the only thing that leads to eternal life. Whether other people also travel that road, travel it faster, slower, earlier, or later, shouldn't make us feel jealous. Unlike resources in this life, eternal happiness is not in limited supply. In short, we don't need to be the best in order to get what we need to be happy. So what's the point of worrying about it? From the desire of being consulted, Deliver me, O Jesus. Here, I'm going to draw a line between two distinct desires. Some people have a desire for other people to hear what they have to say just for the sake of being part of the conversation, or to use modern terminology, having a place at the table. Other people want to speak because they believe that it might help others, or at the very least won't harm them. There is no problem whatsoever with the desire to help others. In fact, Jesus commands his disciples to do exactly this with their speech in Matthew 28, 19-20. It's the desire for your words to be heard for the sake of your own ego that can be harmful. Since there are people who keep talking long after they've run out of things to say. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, O Jesus. Again, similar to esteemed, the approval of God is what matters. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, O Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, O Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, O Jesus. All of these fears are just about people insulting and hating us, and those are the kinds of fears that cause people to give in to peer pressure, even when they know it's wrong. 
from the fear of being calumniated. Deliver me, O Jesus. To be calumniated means to be maliciously or lyingly accused of something. If anything, this would only draw us closer to Jesus and the early Christians, who were also falsely accused of misdeeds. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, O Jesus. This fear is something to avoid because, among other things, it's unjustified. Remember, according to Isaiah 49.15, we will never be forgotten. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, O Jesus. When people mock you unreasoningly, that's not something to be afraid of. In the end, it does more harm to them than to you. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, O Jesus. Being wronged is most definitely a bad thing, but enduring these wrongs with a focus on God rather than on people gains a reward for you, as it says in Colossians 3, 23-24. So while on the one hand suffering wrong is not a good thing in itself, it also gives people opportunities to show greater virtue and to be more greatly rewarded by God. From the fear of being suspected, deliver me, O Jesus. This is similar to being calumniated, except that instead of being openly accused of something, someone privately suspects that you're guilty of something. We shouldn't need to worry about what other people's private thoughts might or might not be. It's the judgment of God that matters. That others may be loved more than I, Jesus grant me the grace to desire it. We shouldn't want to be loved as much as, for example, Jesus, because that would be out of proportion. That others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Again, Jesus, but let's be honest here. No matter how much you may have done in pursuit of holiness, there have been saints who have done more, and they should receive greater esteem because that's only fair. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. I like that this line specifically adds the qualifier, in the opinion of the world. As we've seen over and over in this modern age, the opinion of the world is often really faulty. So why would we want to increase according to a faulty or at least a highly questionable opinion? That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus grant me the grace to desire it. Obviously this does not refer to being among those set aside from eternal life. This means chosen for certain honors and benefits in this life, because then we have a greater chance to receive great rewards in heaven. That others may be praised, and I go unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. In a certain sense, we've gone over these before in the earlier parts of the litany. It's not important to be congratulated by our fellow man or to be the best, because we're not. That others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should, Jesus grant me the grace to desire it. None of us should want to be insufficiently holy, which is why that second part of the sentence is included. However, we should all wish for other people to accomplish even greater holiness, because the greater their holiness is, the better off they'll be, and we should always want the best for others. So in the end, the litany of humility is about asking God to give you the ability to ignore the esteem, praise, scorn, and rewards of earth, and prioritize God over all of that for the sake of your own eternal reward, the eternal reward of others, and because with a proper understanding of the value of earth v. heaven, we should be able to recognize that earthly things just matter less. Next time, the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.